Hey friends, it's Kathy Lamunion here. I am going to try something new that I've not done before. I've got a really, really powerful word that I want to share. Um, and I'm going to try to see if this thing will let me share it. Hmm, it's not really letting me do it. I was going to try to share it on... Um, my other page real quick, but it's not letting me do that. Okay, that's all right. I'll go back and share it later. So no problem. I thought I would try that, but I got a really powerful word I want to share with y'all today. Subtitled this teaching, Made Able to Stay Stable. So we'll be talking to us today a little bit about stability. Okay, so we are living in what the world would call uncertain times, but when we look in the Word, um, we see that our times are in God's hands. And so there is no uncertainty for um, those who are in Christ. So for believers, now I don't, I, I know that um, most of the time, many of the teachings that I share are um, to the church, to the body of Christ. That's what I'm called to do is encourage and build up the body of Christ. Um, so if you might not consider yourself a believer today, I want to encourage you to continue to listen and to watch this video because I promise you it is going to be something that could potentially be life-altering for you. So um, please do continue to watch. But for those of us who are um, believers, who are in Christ, who are part of the body of Christ, um, this is going to be a strong, strong word. Okay, so um, we just now want to turn our ear, open our ears up to hear what the Word of the Lord is saying to us. And um, just really, um, I'm just going to go ahead and ask y'all to stay humble with me because it's not my idea. It's come straight from the Lord. So um, today we're going to be talking, like I said, about stability. And we know that our times are made stable by God's wisdom and by His knowledge. So that is something that we can confess in accordance to the Word. We can just come into agreement with what the Scriptures tell us over in Isaiah 32 and 34. And, and we can say, and you can just say that over yourself right now, my times are made stable by God's wisdom and his knowledge. Okay, so I find it very interesting that when the Lord began to speak to me about stability in uncertain times, um, that I started thinking about the stable and how in the beginning of um, the provision that the Lord God Almighty made for us a way back to him, that it came from a stable beginning when Jesus came, that he came into a stable. So I was like, wow, Lord, that is pretty profound um, that you are showing me how we can stay stable even in uncertain times. And so how is it that it is possible for us to stay stable right now? Well, it's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. See, He has He within us has made us response able so that we can respond in the way that God wants us to in every circumstance, in every challenge, in every situation. We are able, we've been made able to respond the way that Jesus would. And so we have to learn how to tap into that. We have to learn how to position ourselves for that. And it's very, very important that we do that. So I want you to believe that today and really begin to wrap your mind around the fact that um, I don't have to every time I turn the news on and, and see this and that and this and that and this is going up and that's going down and, and we don't have to be moved by all those things. The Lord has made a way and a provision. He's provided a way for us to stay stable. Just steady, 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 steady through all of this and not be just all over the place like that, okay? So um, I think many of us right now um, for our emotionally or maybe um, financially or maybe even physically, um, we will battle these things and different things happen and you, you battle it in your mind. You're okay one minute and the next minute you're not. And then and so we're unstable. We're, we're kind of like somebody with an irregular heart rhythm. Like they, if you were to plug many of us into like an EKG machine, it would just be like, tch, 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 because emotionally or physically or whatever, we're just all over the place. But that's not God's plan. He knew all along that these uncertain days were going to come. But see, our days are, all of our days are written down in his book before we were ever even one day old. So it's very important that we recognize and realize that he's already made a way for us to be um, stable, 
through all of this. We want he his plan is that we stay just stable, and he made a way for us to do that. So. I'm going to um, share something with you now that is um, a little out there for me um, because the Lord speaks to me in um, pictures, in words, um, and picture books and stuff. And um, this is a very strong word, um, and I hesitated greatly from sharing it for quite some time, but I've written notes and um I'm just, I know that the Lord has called me to share this, so I'm going to, so y'all just going to have to be okay with it, all right? Um, a couple of weeks ago, when things really began to get loud in our area with the coronavirus, I heard myself inside my head one time not say that word correctly, and when I said it incorrectly, something within me kind of leapt, and I was like, whoa. And so I wrote it down because I thought, wow, why did I just almost say that out of my mouth? Why did I think that? And and I wrote it down. And do you know what I wrote down, what I heard in my head and what I almost said out of my mouth? Instead of the word coronavirus, king cobra virus, king cobra virus. So I want to talk to you for a few minutes about that, about what I have learned about this thing as I have done some studying and everything. I began to think about it, and really, I was like, Lord, are you trying to show me something here? Are you trying to tell me something here? So I began to study a little bit on the king cobra. Now, if any of you know me, you know that I despise snakes. I, like, want nothing to do with them. So this was really, really hard for me to... um, look up anything about snakes because I don't like to do that. But I'm going to tell you a few things. And maybe there's some scientists watching now or later who will be like, oh, what in the world? But this is um, some things that I found out about the king cobra, okay? They can get to be 18 feet long and they also can weigh up to 30 pounds. And so they are one of the world's longest, um, really, really highly powerful venomous snakes, okay? Their neurotoxin or their venom, the poison that comes out of them, one there's enough neurotoxin in one bite that it can kill up to 20 people. Like there's that much neurotoxin in one bite, that much venom in one bite that it could kill up to 20 people. In order to survive the bite of a king cobra, there are some things that must happen. First of all, you must remain calm. Hmm. The second thing you must do is isolate the wound or the particularly the entire limb, like the arm or the leg, if you're wherever this the bite has struck. And the reason for that is because we have to stop the venom from spreading into the rest of the other parts of the body. And this is a far, very interesting part to me, is the one thing that is going to happen that is the, the part that makes their bite deadly is that it causes respiratory distress, respiratory failure, and ultimately that is what the victim will die from is respiratory problems. And so, wow, does that not just, I don't know, that was very enlightening for me. Now, everything has a nemesis or an enemy. Do you know that if you Um, don't know your enemy, then you don't know how to fight your enemy. So it's very important that we know our enemy. The enemy, the nemesis for the King Cobra is actually just a tiny cute little guy who I always like to go look at when I go to the zoo. And it's the mongoose, okay? The mongoose is the King Cobra's nemesis. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about him. He's small. At best, he's only going to be about 22 inches tall and 11 pounds, and that's the biggest that he's going to get, okay? Now, he was created and equipped to actually hunt and kill the king cobra. Now, this is what I love about the mongoose, okay? He's known for his ability. See, there's that word able again. He's known for his ability to fight and kill venomous snakes, and they are adept at this task due to their agility, their thick coats, and their specialized acetyl 
acetylcholine receptors. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about those words because some of those are some big words there, okay? Agility is the power of moving quickly, okay, and easily. It is also the ability, there's that word able again, to think and draw conclusions quickly, okay? And um, it's also the word acuity there. Now, for those of you who follow and are connected with me through Bodybuilder Ministry, you know that my words for this year are clarity, balance, and acuity. So you know that I've already been studying acuity this year. And that word is actually, um, you know, it has to do with the vision and it's sh it's sharp and keen. It's a sense of, of keenness, okay? So that word that we talked about a few minutes ago, um, the acetylcholine receptors, okay? Now that is an organic chemical that functions um, in the brain and the body as a neurotransmitter. Now I know this sounds all real sciencey, but I promise you, if you're going to stick with me for just a few minutes, we're going to bring this thing back around to the spiritual side and you're going to be like, like, whoa, I cannot believe that because it is so incredibly powerful, okay? Now, the other thing is I want us to remember the um, agility. The mongoose is equipped. They're, they're, um, they were created, okay, for to hunt and to kill this thing, this king cobra, okay? And we want to remember that word ability, how many times the word ability keeps coming up because remember we're talking about that we are created. We are made able to stay stable even in these unstable and uncertain times, okay? So, I want to remind us of all of that. Now, the thick coat, you know how you hear lots of times something, um, well, just take it with a grain of salt or let it just roll off of you like water off a duck's back or something like that, and, and that thick coat, that the reason that those mongoose cannot be um, killed by the venom of this king cobra that that one bite could is enough venom there's enough poison in that one bite to be able to kill 20 people the reason the mongoose is unaffected by that and that they cannot be killed by that is because of their thick coat hmm maybe some of us have a thin coat that the lord has created us to have a thick coat and we just don't realize it. So today we might need to change coats. What do you think? Now, I'm going to move on here and I want to talk about for a minute the fact that because we're going to move on past the sciencey stuff. Remember I told you we're going to go past the science stuff and we're going to bring this thing back around. So God is love and we know that in the scriptures it teaches us all the things that love is and that love is not and we know that love forgives. Okay. Well, do you know that faith only works by love? It does. And if and when we step outside of love and we refuse to forgive, or if we stay in strife with another person, it's almost impossible to receive answers to our prayers. Now, a lot of people right now are quoting um, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and I do believe with all that is within me that that is one of the places that we exactly are at. And so I know that you know this, and it says, but I'm going to break it down and go really slow with it, okay? So if, see, this is an if-then statement, and because I'm a teacher at heart, um, my littles know that when they ask me something and I give them a response or a reply of when that when the answer is yes and when I'm going to do that and when that can happen and everything, and then they come back again and they're badgering me, Aunt Cat, Aunt Cat, you know, I'm like, if then. So if you do your part, then I will do mine. If this, then that. It's, it's an if-then statement. So Second Chronicles 7.14 is an if-then statement for us. And I think so many times we know this scripture, but we don't break it down and really um, take it step by step and imagine in our minds who all it is that it applies to and who it's for. So if my people, that's God's people, who are called by my name, well, I'm his child, you're his child, he called me, and I know that. If my people who are called by my name will See, he's given us a free will. We will. I will. I have to do something that he's telling me to do. Will humble themselves. Okay? Humble themselves. Humility is always going to put others' interests ahead of its own. Always. A place of humility is always going to consider the other person first. Okay? So, number one, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Number two, and pray. 
I think a lot of us are praying right now. We need to be looking at the motive of our heart. We need to be looking at the position of our place of prayer, okay? Number three, and seek in the um, Amplified Version, it says crave, require as a necessity. Seek my face. Require it like my next breath. Like, Lord, I need you. I need your face. I need you like my very next breath. I need you that much right now. Okay. And turn. There's four things there. When we turn, we are repenting. We are to die to self. Okay. From their wicked ways. My wicked ways. My wicked ways. There are wicked ways within me. There are wicked ways within all of us. And the Lord knows that. And that's why he said this, okay? And so it is so important that we consider the wickedness that is within us, okay? Because we, I think a lot of times we think, well, the so-and-so set of people and the people who are being this way and the people who are being that way and and Lord, you know, beckon them, call them, change them, help them to see the error in their ways. Lord, I pray that you'll do this for them and that you'll make them do this and that you'll open their eyes to see this. And really and truly, we need to be taking this thing so to heart and praying and asking God to show us the motive of our own heart, to show us the impurities that are within our own heart. It is so incredibly important that we do that. I really believe that. Okay, then he says, then I will hear them. I will hear them from heaven. So that tells me that we have four things that we need to do. And then he's going to hear us. Remember, we talked about faith works by love. How many of us are really and truly, really walking in love? Now, we can faith the facts But if we're not walking in love, our faith is going to be crippled. It's not going to work the way it's intended to work, the way it's created to work. So this is a challenge for us to really, really, really do a what I call a heart check and to ask God to show us the motive of our hearts. Yes, I'm praying. Yes, I'm praying. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Yes, yes, Lord, I want you to heal our land, to restore our land. And I believe with all that's within me that that is exactly what's happening. More people are praying right now across this world than probably ever have at one time before, which is amazing. But we have got to stop asking God to do something when his hands are tied. If we're not willing to change within ourselves, if, if the motive of our heart is to pray so that God changes our name, or or changes the next person, or changes the person in our house, or changes another person, then our motives are wrong. It has to start right here. It has to start in my heart. It needs to start in your heart. And I can't pray for God to change your heart until I've prayed and asked him to change my heart first. I need to deal with junk in my own heart first. And I really believe that that is a position that we have got to get ourselves in first. Okay, we need to be crying out to Him. He needs to be the we. It needs the the um the Bible shelves at the stores or whatever, if that's possible. I know there aren't really Christian bookstores that you can go to physically much anymore around here at all. But um, like th- that's the shelves that ought to be empty. That's the things that ought to be empty is the Bibles, is is the Word, is the, the all the people who have like podcasts and who have um, biblical teachings and all that stuff. That's what people need to be, what we should be listening to and watching and keeping our eyes attended to more than anything else right now. And if we were doing that, then that would be like, okay, I'm trying to change me. I'm trying to get me changed here. I'm trying to get the wickedness out of me. And that gives God something to work with when we repent within ourselves of those things, okay? So he says, and then he's going to heal our land and restore our land to health. Well, I don't know about you, but I think right now it's very obvious that our land needs to be restored to health, okay? Pride is selfish, and selfish is always going to say, me first, me first, me first. But remember what I said about humility. It's always going to put others' interest ahead of its own. So we need to ask ourselves, why are we seeking him? Are we seeking him for his hand? Are we seeking him for his heart? It's so important that we do that. And the final thing that I want to, um, well, there's two more quick things I want to do with this really quick right here. First of all is going to James 4. So James chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 7 through 10. And this is just one more thing, part of section of scripture I want to break down for us really quick, okay? And this is in the in my Bible, in the New King James Version, it says, humility cures worldliness. 
Humility cures worldliness. Somebody needs to write that down. Like, seriously, if we could all just humble ourselves before God, imagine what he could do to cure the worldliness that's going on. And so it says in verse 7, James chapter 4, Therefore, submit to God. Everybody knows what's next, don't you? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, how much of us, how many of us right now are doing the resisting, resisting, resisting? Rebuking, rebuking, rebuking. We're getting rid of the devil, just pushing him away, pushing him away. I'm standing, I'm I'm rebuking the devil. We got to quit getting in a word battle with the devil. I want to tell you today, what if, and I really believe this with all that's within me, our submission is our resistance. What if? Our submission to God, to his plan, to his will, to his ways. Now, that means that we're going to have to forgive somebody that we haven't forgiven. And it might be that you have to start with the man or woman in the mirror. How about that? We've got to forgive because Jesus forgives. We've got to forgive in the same way that he forgives. We've got to forgive for the same reasons that he forgives. We've got to forgive Okay, and so we should be studying that right now, studying forgiveness and how to go about forgiving because otherwise our prayers are being hindered, y'all. So therefore submit to God and that is the part that it says resist the devil and he will flee from you. So if our submission is our resistance, then we need to be focusing on the submission, okay? It goes on in verse 8 to say draw near to God and he will draw near to you, okay? But we can't draw near to him if our heart is, if the motive of our heart is not right, if we're in, in um, if we have impurity in our heart and everything, if our hands aren't clean, because it says in the scriptures, who shall ascend the hill? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. So we need to be praying for that. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This next part says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. How many of us are double-minded? We So often we are double-minded. We will say one thing and do another, or it's always trying to fix somebody else, fix them, change them, control them, whatever, about somebody else when we're not looking at the wickedness within our own hearts, okay? Lament and mourn and weep. That's what it says. Lament and mourn and weep. We should be doing that over what? Over what's going on in the world all around us? Yes, but what should we do it, be doing it for first? For ourselves, for the sin that is within our own hearts, for the sin that is within our own lives. It says, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Well, you know I had a problem with that because y'all know I'm a joy girl. I'm all about the joy of the Lord. But do you know that we are laughing over things we shouldn't be laughing over? And we are, um, we need to allow uh, the sin that is within us to turn us around to, to, it's no laughing matter. It's nothing that we should be joyful or rejoicing over at all. And so that's what it says. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And I believe with all that is within me that at that place, at that point in time, when we have lamented and mourned and weeped over the sin that is in our lives, over the wickedness that is in our lives, over the things that we are putting, that we're binge watching, that we are got to have my this and my that, and that we're eating, and the bad things we're doing with food, and don't get me started on that, and all these other things. When we're doing all these other things, we're putting those. Those are idols that are coming before God. He wants to be first. He wants to be the very air that we breathe. He wants to be that important to us. And so I'm going to leave us today with a confession that is the Word of God, okay? We're going to be reminded that the Spirit of the living God that is within us has made us able to to stay stable. In these even uncertain times, we should not be like this, okay? We should not be that way, okay? So, we stay calm in the midst of strife. We stay calm in the midst of fear and anger. Every obstacle that the enemy throws at us, we stay calm. How do we do that? By attending to God's words. We incline our ears to his words and we don't let them depart from our eyes. We keep them in the midst of our heart at all times. And because of that, our times are stable and his wisdom and it's his knowledge that keeps us stable, keeps us established in righteousness, okay? And fear and terror are far away from us. Oppression is far away from us because we know that he's given his angels charge over us to um, guard us, to defend us, to protect us, and to keep us lest we dash our foot against a stone. 
lest we die, lest we bump into the King Cobra virus. Hmm. Well, too many times right now we are so concerned about don't let the King the see I can't even say it now. Don't let coronavirus come near me or my children or my husband or my family or my my mother or my this or what. Oh, we don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. But think of yourself like that little bitty mongoose, okay? The Lord created you before the foundation of the world, and He now has put His Spirit in you and made you response able to all these things so that we don't have to operate in fear. We don't have to be oppressed by terror. Those things, He doesn't want us praying, 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 praying because we're so afraid. He wants us to walk in His peace, to stay stable, to work all these things out of us to pray from a position of, Lord, forgive me where I've been wrong. Show me the error in my ways. Help me to see, not for everybody else to see the error in their ways. Show me the error in my ways. And I, as I've begin, begun to pray from that place, the Lord is convicting my heart in different areas and showing me, He's teaching me and showing me that as I have convictions that change from day to day over the um, quarantine and the isolations and the different things that we're being asked to do and everything, when I have things to say that don't agree with that, then really I'm not in submission to the law of the land. I'm not in submission to um, people who've been given authority over me. And I am being selfish. And I am not. God does not. He didn't create me to be selfish. He didn't cre- it's not about me. He didn't create me for me. And so um, I've been really, really been dealing with that in my heart. I'm like, Lord, change the motive of my heart and help it to be pure before you at all times. And I just, so right now, I just want to close this in prayer. And thank the Lord for this word that he's given me today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person who's watching now, who will watch later on the replay. Father, I thank you for this word and for this teaching. Um, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are in us, that you have, um, you've made us able. You have enabled us to stay stable, even in unstable times, that you have made a way for us to stay and remain stable and to be confidently content, to be bold right now in this time. And I thank you, Father, for that so much. I thank you, Lord, that we can remain calm and um, completely at peace, even in the midst of strife all around us. We know that you are our protector and our provider and our deliverer and our redeemer and our soon coming king. And we bless you and praise you in the name name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, um, I mean, and and guys, I just want to tell y'all that um, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching all of you and everything. Um, If anybody watches this or if you know somebody, I would love the opportunity to pray with people. Anybody that needs prayer or that wants to pray, let me know because I'd be glad to pray with you guys anytime. And also, um, Anybody that is watching that you have questions about salvation, how can I be saved? Please, I I just um, ask you to reach out to me and let me know. I would be so glad to pray with you and everything because now um, we need Jesus more than we've ever, ever needed him before. And so um, I just want to encourage you that today is the day of salvation. Praise God and what a blessed day it is. So thank you all so much for joining and I will see you all next time. And remember that um, you are so loved. Bye.